So, I just got done finishing. Sorry for the light. I've been told that my videos have been really dark. And I went back and I watched it. Watched them all and yeah, they, they've been kind of dark. But, oh, I'm hoping this isn't too bad. Now, <laughs> I just got back from the movies with my girlfriend. And we went and watched uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Today is, by the time you guys are watching this, it won't be the 7th of July, but today is the 7th of July. Today is the official release day for Spider-Man Homecoming. Don't mind me, I'm just taking off my shoes. Um, my God. Oh, spoilers. Just saying, spoilers. Now, my God, is this movie amazing. I hear I even got the poster. I have, I have to hang it up yet, but... My God. I love, I love this movie. Already. I love this movie already. This movie is great. Now, before I get into any details, I just wanted to say that I stayed away from almost everything Spider-Man. I saw a lot of Spider-Man trailers. I think I saw two or three of the trailers and I've seen a couple of TV spots. I was like, all right, enough. Enough is enough. I've seen a lot, I've seen way too much. That's a big no-no. So uh, I didn't watch anything. So whatever has been in any of the new trailers until the movie released, I didn't see any of them. Now, before I went to this movie, I knew and I heard that the Rotten Tomato score was pretty high. Now, before the early releases here in America, I think they might have been released earlier in other countries, but the um, Rotten Tomato score was 97. And if it was going to stay like 97, that'd be the best MCU thing in general. Because the best MCU um, movie is Iron Man with 94. Percent on Rotten Tomatoes and the best MCU TV show is Luke Cage with 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's not that high and it's not too much lower. As of today, Spider Man Homecoming is 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. That ties with Iron Man 1. Now, I may have stated in other videos what my favorite MCU movies were. I mean, it's, it's so hard. To, to pick because they're so great I love them all even from like the the crappy ones or the more or less one like the less good ones like uh, Thor the Dark World or, or the Incredible Hulk I love those movies I love all the MCU movies sure I love some of them more than others but I love them all and I'll rewatch them all and eventually I'll have a big ass um, uh, a binge binge marathon <laughs> uh, that won't be for a while but anyways my two favorite movies, arguably, and I had to think about it, were Doctor Strange and Iron Man 1. Two of the best MCU movies up until now. Spider-Man Homecoming has definitely taken spot number one. Now, Tom Holland was great in this movie, okay? Let's, let's take it back a little bit. Let's bring it back. Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker. He, he, he was nerdy. He looked nerdy. He sounded nerdy. He was a photographer. Okay, Peter Parker was nerdy for for Tobey Maguire. His Spider-Man was good, not great, not fantastic, not perfect, just good. And that's not bad because it's good. It's not bad. Tobey Maguire was a was a good Peter Parker. Was a great Peter Parker and a good Spider-Man. He he you know he was more of a serious Spider-Man. He wasn't. How Spider-Man is, you know, all kind of comic-y. Andrew Garfield was an okay Peter Parker, but he was a he was a pretty good <laughs> Spider-Man. He had the comic relief and everything. He was he was really good. But Tom Holland, my God, seeing him in Civil War and seeing him in Homecoming, Tom Holland is a great, a great. Peter Parker. Almost perfect. I mean, not... Because Peter Parker is supposed to be a nerd, and that's exactly what Tom Holland is in this movie. He's a perfect Peter Parker, almost. Except nerds don't have six-packs or eight-packs. <laughs> Minus that, though. Tom Holland was a great 
nerd. He, he, he played the nerd geek, smart. Peter Parker, great. He did that. And he was a fantastic Spider-Man. He was great. He had the comic relief, the seriousness, and the agility, and the speed, and, and kind of how he, like, kind of ish new to his powers. You could see him learning and all that shit as Spider-Man. Oh my god. I loved the movie. It was great. I enjoyed this a lot. Spider-Man Homecoming is definitely up there, up top, number one of all the MCU movies that I, you know, have seen, which is all of them. It's up there. It's, it's number one. It's up top. So in order for my top three MCU movies, from three to one is Doctor Strange, Iron Man 1, Spider-Man Homecoming. I loved it. <laughs> um, I think, like, it, kind of going based off of this, out of the older MCU movies, the only competition Spider-Man Homecoming has is pretty much Avengers 1 and, and Iron Man. Um, for some of the new content, I think Thor Ragnarok Okay, and, and Black Panther are going to be pretty good movies, if not great. But I don't think they will be anywhere as, as good as Homecoming. I think the only good competition that Homecoming has got is Iron is Avengers, Infinity War, and Avengers 4, which might be titled Infinity Gauntlet. Those are probably the only good competition that. Spider-Man Homecoming has. Um, the movie was great. The Vulture, okay, is a good villain. Now, Marvel has been criticized. Well, MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, has been criticized for not having some of the best villains. Like, you name off some of the best villains for the movies, not the TV shows. Who do y'all get? You get Loki. He was pretty good. Um, probably, arguably, one of the best. All right. Um... Uh, <laughs> Thanos, I mean, he hasn't had a a big spot yet, but Thanos, you know, I mean, he's getting there. You know, obviously he's going to be the main villain in Infinity War and Avengers 4, but even though he hasn't really done much, he's still classified as one of the best villains. Um, and probably Ego, the living planet, maybe. Um, but, I mean, I also liked Iron Mongler, you know, from Iron Man 1. I liked him. Um, Bucky, he, he's, I mean, he's a good guy now, but he was a villain. Okay, Bucky was a good villain. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and someone said Dormammu, you know, was pretty good, but he, he didn't really have much of a big part. <laughs> um, but... Vulture definitely is up there as one of the great MCU villains. Because, I mean, he didn't have the whole mindset of, I want to take over and rule the world or destroy the world. I, I want, you know, he didn't want that. What he wanted is he wanted to take care of his family. And he wanted to not necessarily completely ruin the Avengers, but he wanted to get revenge on the Avengers. Mainly Tony Stark. Because they're, you know, the rich rich pricks who, who, who only care about themselves and don't care about the people who work for them. But he had the mindset for actually being a, a villain that we can all relate to. Um, you know, he, he was just relatable. That, that's pretty much it. Um, let's see here. Uh, I don't want to give out too much, but, you know, Spider-Man obviously is his... his, his suit taken away, but he also obviously gets it back. I'm not 100% sure on this. I I kind of I kind of got a little too excited in the movie theater when I seen this, but towards the end of the movie, uh, um, Tony Stark offers um, Peter a new suit. Peter says no, and he, he respectfully declines it, and he sticks with the suit that he has now. The new suit that he was offered looked so much like the Iron Spider. He looks so much like the Iron Spider. I hope, I hope it was the Iron Spider, and if it was, I hope it gets used 
an Infinity War or, or, or a Gauntlet or, or Spider-Man 2, I don't care. I hope he puts it on and uses it at least once. If that is the Iron Spider suit, I don't know. It looked killer. It was great. Also, Pepper Potts returns. Pepper's in this movie only for a small cameo. She, she's back. Happy was back, um, obviously. He, he, he had a bigger role, though, than... He probably had about the same size role as Iron Man did. He, he had a good role. He had a decent sized role. Captain America, he's in the movie. Um, he's actually in the movie a couple times. Not, like, mainly just a TV show. But Cat, there, there's two end credit scenes in this. One of the end credit scenes at the very, very, very end was Captain America giving a funny historical speech. Um, but, like, a, a, a mid credit scene. It showed, you know, Vulture. He, he, he was obviously, he wasn't killed. He was, he was sentenced to prison. And he, he met up with this other convict who's like, you know, I, I know a guy who can and kill Spider-Man or whatever. And he's like, and I heard rumors on the street that you know who Spider-Man is. Which is true. Vulture does know who Spider-Man is. But for some reason, he, he said no. He doesn't know him. Because if he did know him, he would have killed him. So that means he's retaliating. A little bit not necessarily mean he's gonna become a hero which I kind of hope he doesn't because he's a great villain and he needs to just stay a villain a lot of movies these days are bringing villains to good guys and it's just not working well <laughs> I mean it, it not that it's not working well it's just come on bro keep it original or keep it original you know but the guy who I who was in prison who you know he didn't have a description or nothing like that I came to think that he was Cletus Cassidy, the guy who, who eventually turns into Carnage. But then I got to thinking, no, he can't be, because in the new Venom movie coming out next year in 2018, Carnage is going to be in that movie. So if Carnage is in Venom, Carnage can't be in Spider-Man 2 or whatever movie that this dude's going to be in. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's complicated. I mean, they're in the same universe, but Venom can't show up in the MCU. And if Venom can't show up, and Carnage can't show up, but Tom Holland can show up in the Venom movie, it makes almost... It's so confusing, but I don't know. So whoever this guy is that Vulture met up with in prison, met up with in prison, it, it is a big mystery. And I'm curious. Also, Danny Glover's character in the movie, he wasn't as big, you know... But there's been speculation that he is, he might be Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man, which I don't know how I feel about that. But anyways, that's my review. That's what I think about this movie. I loved it. 10 out of 10. Top Marvel Cinematic movie, uh, so, you know, so far. And I don't just say that about every other movie. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was great, but I, I didn't walk out of that theater saying, all right, that's my favorite. MCU movie. No. It was good, but it wasn't, you know, anywhere close to the top spot. But Spider-Man Homecoming, I tell you what. Amazing. I loved it. Now, if you guys actually stayed this long into the video, I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And I, and I want you to comment down there when you guys do, if you, if you guys do. Comment what your favorite MCU movie is to date. And what you thought about Spider-Man Homecoming. That's all I got for you guys today. Until then, do something.